Evening one and all, it's Mr. Cinema Junkie here with my selection for the Alphabet of Awesome Movies. Hit a little bit of a snag, I did. I went through every title in my shelf. Every title. And I own absolutely no Q titles. Cue the sad music. Wah, 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 wah. Um, so I'm going to take a little stab here. I'm going to exercise a little creative license. And I'm going to invoke the king's privilege. That's right. I'm going to do two R titles. Is that okay? If it's not, please raise your hands. Okay, let's proceed. Cutting right to the R's. I saw that uh, Dyslexic Nick put up a Q and an R title. So... Instead of doing a Q and R title, I'm going to do two R titles. And here they are. I don't think I'll be stepping on anybody's toes because there is like a ton of R titles. Mass quantities of R titles. So for my R titles, I'm going to get the one that put Quentin Tarantino on the map. Reservoir Dogs. Anyone who's seen this movie has to agree how incredible of a movie this is. You basically take this group of guys right here. You put them together to pull a diamond heist. The entire movie is comprised of everything but the heist. The time right after it. The time leading up to it. How everybody met. How they got their names. The standoff. Hiding out after the job. But they never actually show the heist. It's still full of action, uh, gratuitous amounts of violence, and for those who haven't seen it, I won't ruin it too much for you, but they discovered that amongst the group, there is an informant, a snitch, a rat, and things get real thick between everybody because everybody starts accusing each other. The only ones they don't accuse are the ones that wind up getting killed. Once you're dead, you're presumed innocent. My favorite scene in the movie is a scene with Mr. Blonde, uh, which is, he is played by Madsen. Can't remember his first name. Don't know why. Michael Madsen. Thank you. He plays Mr. Blonde. He is a total sociopath, psychopath, and he goes to work on a cop, and he tells him plain and simple, I'm not going to torture you to find out what you know or what you don't know. I'm going to torture you because I like it. So it doesn't matter. At this point, you know, it doesn't matter what this cop says or does or promises him. He's going to get his world messed up. And he does exactly that. This is a landmark movie. I know some people might think it's overhyped. Um, but to me, I just think it was great movie making all the way around. And it's one that I never get tired of. You'll notice a couple of similarities in, in names throughout his movies. Uh, in this movie, when he's talking to Michael Madsen, uh, he's talking about a woman asking how she's doing. How's, how's Alabama, I think her name was. And she's, ah, she's doing okay, she's doing okay. Well, that, that character comes up later in the movie True Romance. And then Michael Madsen himself plays a guy, uh, plays Vega. His last name is Vega. Well, in Pulp Fiction, John Travolta plays a character whose name is Vega. And that spawned a rumor that there was going to be a movie made with Michael Madsen and John Travolta called The Vega Brothers which I think would have been an awesome-ass movie, if you ask me. So that's my first pick for Alphabet of Awesome Movies, Reservoir Dogs. My next pick is a comedy. And this one gets my pick because it crossed a lot of lines. It dared to be a little different. It pushed a lot of buttons. It received a lot of criticism before it was even released. And they still went forward with it and came out with a top-notch entertainment piece 
and that movie is The Ringer. It stars Johnny Knoxville of Jackass fame, and the cast, the lead cast, is split up between people who are actually mentally challenged and some that are not. And it was, I was hard-pressed to decide who was and who wasn't, other than the people I had already known from previous movies. Um, this guy right here, this big guy, does an exceptional job. Um, but he, uh, I've seen him in uh, Skittles commercials, being himself. And so he, he was just acting in this movie. He did a great job. Nothing too over the top, nothing insulting, nothing be, that berated anybody. And the movie is basically about Johnny Knoxville's character, um, his his landscaper gets his fingers cut off in a lawnmower, and he needs to get the money together to help him pay for a, an operation. He can't think of anything, and they're gonna lose. He's gonna lose his fingers, and his uncle, who's a, a gambler, tells him that he needs a break. He needs to win something. So they come up with a way for him to make money and for his uncle to win. And what he does is he pretends to be mentally challenged so that he can compete in the Special Olympics. He figures going up against people in the Special Olympics is an easy win. He'll just skate through it, no problem. And he will he'll get the money easy breezy peasy. Finds out when he gets there that it's anything but easy, that these are real athletes. They try hard, they run hard, uh, they they do everything 110%, and it's no easy walk. And he learns a whole new respect for just people in general, not taking them at at face value, but looking beyond that. Uh, it does kind of get on its soapbox every once in a while, and gets a little preachy sometimes. Um, <clears throat> like... Uh, when his uncle says something about, you know, go out there and go out there and whip that retard's ass. And, and Johnny Knoxville says, don't ever say that. Don't ever use that word again. And it's like, okay, I understand what you're saying. Don't, that's not nice to say that. Okay, it's not a nice word. It's not politically correct. We all know that. But it, it could have been maintained in a way where it wasn't so in your face about it. You know? Uh, the Farrelly brothers, the ones who did this movie. They, they're known for crossing lines and, and really taking chances with their movies. So when they were, when they wanted to do this movie, uh, they were met with some criticism. They were met with, with the, especially the guy who's in charge of the Special Olympics. He really had something to say about it. Was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No. You're not making this movie here. You're not going to do that. And, uh, but then they took it to some of the, I guess, the, the senior uh, competitors and asked them what they thought about it and they said a lot of the people who watch Johnny Knoxville's movies like Jackass things like that um, those are the people that consider us retarded those are the people who say that we're nothing but retards maybe if he makes this movie they'll stop doing that so they have an opinion about it. They had an opinion about it, and they took that to heart, and they said, okay, then, gave it a green light, and they went for it. I thought they did it in a very tasteful manner. There was nothing nothing about it that I could say was, was rude or out of line. Um, but it is a Fairly Brother movie, so it, it is going to push some buttons somewhere. So it's not for everybody, but I think it's a hilarious movie. And... Uh, I definitely recommend either one of these, Reservoir Dogs or The Ringer. And those are my choices for the Alphabet of Awesome Movies, the R Selection. And I'd like to take this time to dedicate my second half of my, my Alphabet of Awesome Movies, The Ringer, to my good friend Half the Mike. Peace, man!